Hello, this is Yashveen. In this video, I'll be solving paper 2, variant 2, February, March 2017, 9701 chemistry. 1A, the table shows information about some of the elements in the third period. And uh, the first question part asks you to complete the table to show the maximum oxidation number of each element in its compounds. So the maximum oxidation number would be achieved by losing all of the outer shell electrons. And so it would increase from plus 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. To explain why the atomic radius of elements in the third period decreases from sodium to chlorine. So the atomic number increases across the period, period 3. And this causes an increase in number of protons in the nucleus. And so the nuclear charge, which is positive, increases ac across the period. And because the number of shells remains constant throughout the period, the shielding effect on valence shell in electrons remains fairly constant. So that attraction of valence electrons to the protons in the nucleus becomes greater than the repulsion between electrons in the shells. So the nuclear attraction for valence shell electrons increases across the period which leads to a smaller radius. The radius of the most common ion of magnesium is much smaller than the radius of the most common ion of sulfur. Identify both ions and explain the difference in their radii. Magnesium in group 2 has two electrons in its valence shell, so it loses those electrons and uh, therefore loses a shell and has an oxidation number of plus 2. Whereas sulfur is in group 6, so it's uh, going to gain 2 electrons to complete its outer shell, so it's got a charge of negative 2. B phosphorus is a non metal in the third period and it reacts vigorously with excess oxygen but slowly with chlorine. Some reactions of phosphorus are shown. 1. Write an equation to represent reaction 1 and the formation of compound A. So phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus oxide. Uh, phosphorus exists in the form of P4. So phosphorus which exists in the form of um, a molecule consisting of four phosphorus atoms reacts with oxygen molecule to form phosphorus oxide. And it has the following formula P4O10 and you need to balance the number of L oxygen on the left hand side so you put a 5 there to give two observations you could make in reaction 2 so reaction 2 is the reaction of phosphorus with chlorine to form the white solid which is phosphorus pentachloride so you'd see a white solid forming and since chlorine gas is green in color after the reaction it would be absent and so you'd see the green color gas disappearing Three, name the compound B, so phosphorus pentachloride reacting with water form phosphoric acid and hydrochloric acid as well. Three, a naturally occurring sample of cerium contains only four isotopes. Data for three of the isotopes are shown in the table. So you're given the relative isotopic mass and the percentage abundance of the four types of of the four kinds of isotopes all right so the percentage abundance is to be calculated for the fourth and the last one the ar of the sample is 140.116 use the data to calculate the relative isotopic mass of the fourth isotope in this sample of cerium and give your answer to the to three decimal places to calculate the ar you add up the products of isotopic mass and the percentage abundance of all of the isotopes. Divide that by 100 and that would give you the AR, the value of AR. Add up the products of uh, all of the is you add up the you add up the products of isotopic mass and the percentage abundance of all of the isotopes in a substance. Of all of the isotopes divide that by 100 and that would give you the AR the value of AR and so to calculate the relative isotopic mass of this isotope over here you need to know the percentage abundance which would be uh, summing all of the rest of the percentages and subtracting that from 100 and that is equal to 11.114 you're dividing the into uh, the sum of all of the products by 100 you shift that to the right hand side to multiply with the ar and then subtract the sum of the first three brackets 
from the resultant product and then divide that by 11.114 and so you'd get the answer as 141.915 correct to three decimal places. Two hydrogen halides are compounds formed when halogens or group 17 elements react with hydrogen and the bond polarity of hydrogen halide decreases from hydrogen fluoride to hydrogen iodide. Some relevant data are shown in the table. A1 explain the meaning of the term bond polarity. Uh, bond polarity usually occurs when a covalent bond is formed between two atoms of different electronegativities where electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the covalent bond pair of electrons towards itself and it increases across the period. So bond polarity occurs when two atoms of different electronegativities are bonded together where the electron bond pair would be attracted more by the element that has greater electronegativity. So in this case, the halogens have greater electronegativity. So they pull the electron pair towards themselves and this leads to asymmetric distribution of electrons, which is the description of bond polarity. To suggest why the boiling point of hydrogen fluoride is much higher than the boiling points of other hydrogen halides. Whenever you come across questions regarding melting points or boiling points in covalent compounds, it's more often than not regarding the intermolecular forces. So the forces between the molecules of the compound. So there are three types of those, the van der Waal forces, permanent dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonds with increasing strength in that order. Where van der Waal forces are present in all molecules, Permanent dipole-dipole forces are present in polar molecules and hydrogen bonds are present only uh, in molecules where a hydrogen atom is bonded to fluorine, a nitrogen or an oxygen atoms. That means hydrogen fluoride is the only one of the hydrogen halides that has a hydrogen bonding and since hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular, it's going to result in the greatest boiling point. To boil a substance, you need to break its intermolecular forces uh, for its molecules to be able to spread far enough to become gases, which is why you need to write the second point, which says that um, hydrogen bonds require greatest amount of energy to overcome. Three, describe and explain the relative thermal st stabilities of the hydrogen halides. Thermal stabilities refers to the strength of the hydrogen halide bond. The greater the stability, the higher the bond energy, which is the energy required to break the bonds, which uh, the thermal stabilities of hydrogen halides decreases as you go down the group. Therefore, the bond energy of uh, hydrogen halides decreases, meaning that the hydrogen halide bond becomes weaker because going down the group, the number of shells increases and this increases the atomic radius. And as the atomic radius of the halogens increases, the nuclear attraction for the bond pair electrons between the halogen and the hydrogen, this attraction decreases and therefore it becomes easier to break that bond. B. The equation for the preparation of hydrogen chloride using concentrated sulfuric acid is shown. One, use the bronsted lorry theory of acids and bases to identify the base and its conjugate acid in this reaction and explain your answer. So the base in this reaction would be chloride ion since it is going to accept the hydrogen ion to form uh, hydrogen chloride and therefore hydrogen chloride is its conjugate base as it has uh, accepted the hydrogen ion. To explain why the reaction of concentrated sulfuric acid and sodium iodide is not suitable for the preparation of hydrogen iodide, when the reaction occurs between sulfuric acid and sodium iodide, it produces iodine instead of hydrogen iodide because sulfuric acid is, a, is an oxidizing agent which is strong enough to oxidize iodide ions to iodine but not strong enough to oxidize chloride ions to chlorine. C. Hydrogen chloride undergoes a reversible reaction with oxygen. 
the reaction is carried out at 400 degrees Celsius in the presence of copper chloride catalyst. One, use the data in the table to calculate the overall enthalpy change of reaction where you are given the enthalpy change of formation of two of the substances in the reaction. To deal with such questions, I'd suggest that you draw three boxes, one of which would be for the reactants. So you just write down the reactants in one box. In the second one, you'd write down the products. Do not draw these boxes in the exams. This is just for explanation purpose. And in the third box, here I've drawn in the third box, which contains all of the elements that are used to make the reactants and the products. Because we are given enthalpy changes of formation, you draw arrows from the uh, third box, which I've labeled C, to the box of reactants and the box of products. I've labeled bo these boxes A, B, and C. Now, we need the elements to form the products. So you start from box C and end up at D, meaning that the enthalpy changes that occur going from the elements to the products. So from box C to B would be equal to the enthalpy changes that occur when you take an indirect route uh, going from C to A and then C to B, which is why I've written the enthalpy change of changes going from C to B are equal to 2 times negative 242 because you need enthalpy change of formation of the product which is 2 moles of water and you don't need that for elements. The, the enthalpy change of formation is only used for compounds. And similarly, you need 4 times negative 92 kilojoules to produce, to form 4 moles of hydrogen chloride. So going from C to B, 2 times negative 242 is equal to going from C to A and A to B, which is unknown. And therefore, you form the equation 2 times negative 242 is equal to 4 times negative 92 plus X. And when you solve that equation, you'd find out that X is equal to negative 116 kilojoule per mole. To state the type of catalyst used in this reaction and explain how a catalyst is able to increase the rate of a chemical reaction. The catalyst used here is um, copper chloride which is solid in state and because hydrogen chloride and oxygen are in gaseous form, the catalyst is heterogeneous catalyst as it's got a different physical state to the reactants and catalysts lower activation energy by providing an alternate route. The reaction exists in dynamic equilibrium and it was repeated at 1000 degrees Celsius and the same pressure. State and explain the effect on the composition of equilibrium mixture of the change in temperature. Earlier it was carried out at 400 degrees Celsius and now it's being carried out at a greater temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius. During the enthalpy change of reaction, we found out that the forward reaction is exothermic, indicated by the negative sign, meaning that it's going to be favored by lower temperature. And if the temperature is increased, the equilibrium shifts to left hand side, producing greater amount of reactants and lower amounts of products. For when 1.6 mole of hydrogen chloride are mixed with sealed container with 0.5 mole of oxygen at 400 degrees Celsius, 0.6 mole of chlorine and 0.6 mole of water are formed. The total pressure inside the container is 1.5 times 10 to the, power, to the power of 5 pascals. Calculate the amounts in moles of uh, hydrogen chloride and oxygen in the equilibrium mixture. To find the amounts at equilibrium mixture, you need to draw the ICE table which refers to the amount of reactants and products present um, initially uh, during the change and finally at equilibrium. So to do that, I'd first write the equation of the reaction, which is, so we start with 1.6 mole of hydrogen chloride that reacts with 5 moles, uh, sorry, 0 0.5 moles of oxygen. And because we do not start with any of the products, that means initially the amount of both of these is going to be zero. Um, as for the change, we are not given how much of hydrogen chloride and oxygen reacts. However, we are given how much of each of the products is formed. Therefore, we are going to add that. So uh, this would be plus 0 0.6, which is the amount of both of these products formed. Because you have used positive sign on the product side, you're going to use negative sign on the reactant side because the products used are made using the reactants. And so you'd subtract 
uh, some amount from the reactants as you can see two mole of chlorine are formed for every one mole of uh, oxygen molecules and that means uh, six, 0 0.6 mole of chlorine would be formed by using half of the mole of oxygen so that would be negative 0 0.6 divided by 2 similarly uh, for every two moles of chlorine four moles of hydrogen chlorides are used so double that and as a result of that here you would subtract 0 0.6 times 2 so 2 times negative 0 0.6 uh, subtracted from 1.6 is equal to 0 0.4 which is the amount of moles of hydrogen chloride and 0 0.6 divided by 2 and subtracted from 0 0.5 is 0 0.2 these are the moles of hydrogen chloride and oxygen present at equilibrium and since you have added 0 0.6 to zeros for both of the products they would be 0 0.6 mole of both of the products at equilibrium calculate the mole fraction of chlorine and hence the partial pressure of chlorine in the equilibrium mixture the mole fraction of chlorine is equal to the number of moles of chlorine divided by the sum of all of the moles all of the number of moles present at equilibrium so that would be 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 times 2 and that would be equal to 1 over 3 and to calculate the partial pressure of chlorine you would multiply the mole fraction with the total pressure of container given in the question as 1.5 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals 5 in a separate experiment an equilibrium reaction mixture was found to contain the four gases at the partial pressures shown in the table use this information and the expression for equilibrium constant to calculate a value for it and state the units do the following calculations so in the numerator you've got the product of partial pressures of the products which are chlorine and water raised to the power that they were given in the equation and then you divide that by the partial pressure of the product of partial pressure of the reactants and so the answer is 1.5 1.05 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and as for the units in the numerator you've got pascal to the power of 4 and then in the denominator you've got pascal to the power of 5 since you add up the base values and so pascal to the power of 4 divided by pascal to the power of 5 would be 4 minus 1 and therefore the power of the unit pascal would be negative 1. The reaction is repeated without a catalyst state the effect of this on the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant would remain the same without being affected. Three A, a series of reactions starting from one bromobutane is shown. One display the formula of the uh, compound P. So compound P forms when you react hydrogen cyanide and potassium cyanide with one bromobutane. This would be nucleophilic substitution where the bromine mole atom would be replaced by cyanide ion. And so you've got four carbon atoms since it's butane and cyanide ion attached to either of the two terminal carbon atoms so here i've got the cyanide ion with carbon forming three bonds with nitrogen and then the rest of the hydrogen atoms to identify the reagents and the conditions for reactions one and two reaction one is the um hydrolysis of this product to form an acid and that would require aqueous hydrogen chloride whereas a reaction 2 is a removal of bromine to form an alkene and that would require sodium hydroxide in an in ethanol 3 draw the structure of the repeat unit of the polymer q to draw the polymer of q you need to draw the monomer of uh, of the polymer q and that is but one in in addition polymerization which is what's happening over here since you only have one monomer the two carbon atoms involved in the double bond are part of the main chain and so the 
monomer of this reaction is the following where you've got the double bond between two carbon atoms and then the rest of the chain forms a branch this would be the monomer and it forms the polymer where the double bond opens up and here again you've got the ethyl group ch2 ch3 um, excuse my three over here so the double bond is opened up the rest of the atoms are hydrogen atoms we complete the reaction scheme to show the mechanism of the reaction of one bromobutane with aqueous hydroxide ion to produce R. Include all necessary charges, dipoles, lone pairs, and curly arrows in the structure of R. Um, the reaction between a halogenoalkane and aqueous hydroxide ions is a nucleophilic substitution where the bromine atom or the halogen atom is going to be replaced by the nucleophile over here. And that happens because carbon bromine uh, bond causes bond polarity as bromine is more electronegative so the bonding pair of electron gets attracted towards bromine giving it a partial negative charge and because the electron are pulled away from carbon it would have a partial positive charge and the negative charge on the hydroxide ion would be attracted to that and so it would form a bond with carbon and because carbon can only bond four can only form four bonds it would break this bond with bromine over here and so you've got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen which has a negative charge um, partial positive charge on carbon partial negative charge on bromine the hydroxide ion attacks from the opposite side and the carbon halogen bond breaks down and this forms the final product where you've got the tetrahedral layout and this is the final product in the tetrahedral layout see butonine reacts with steam as shown to form a mixture of two structural isomers as nt when an alkene reacts with steam it's going to form an alcohol now this type of reaction is electrophilic addition reaction since the double bond is broken down by an electrophile which in this case is uh, steam and the major product would be formed using a carbocation that is more stable than the carbocation that forms the minor product and then the alcohol would be uh, oxidized to an aldehyde uh, an acid or a ketone S can be oxidized with acidified potassium dichromate to form U. S and U both react with alkaline aqueous iodine. All right, uh, let me draw out the structure, all of the structures in all of the steps in here. We've got butone. So the double bond is in between the first and second carbon atoms. When you add steam to it, the positive hydrogen would be attracted to the negative electron density caused by the double bond and so it would form a bond with either this carbon atom or this carbon atom and so the two possible uh, results would be these where hydrogen bonds with the first carbon atom and so uh, the double bond would break down since carbon can only form four bonds and so this carbon atom since it loses the electrons that it had from this electron now is going to have a positive charge and the rest of the structure would be normal in the second case the carbon uh, second carbon would form bond with the hydrogen from the water molecules and in that case since oxygen electrons would be lost from the first carbon atom it would have a positive charge the first case is a secondary carbocation since it's got one and two alkyl groups bonded to it whereas the second case is a primary carbocation since there's only one alkyl group bonded to the positive carbon atom and so the primary carbocation forms minor product which is T which is less stable and the first case which is the secondary carbocation forms the major product since this is more stable so we can just label this this as s and this one as t this carbon atom with positive charge would bind with the uh, negative oxygen in the hydroxide ion and so it would form the alcohol similarly here this carbon would bind with 
hydroxide ion. S is a secondary alcohol, whereas T is a primary alcohol. Uh, and so S would form ketone when oxidized by an oxidizing agent. And if S reacts, if S and U react with alkyl, alkylene aqueous iodine, that is because S over here has a CH3 bonded to the carbon atom that has a CHOH. And similarly, U would be this over here. Um, so the second, since it's a secondary alcohol, it loses the alcohol group and it now becomes a ketone. And because the carbon with a double bond and with an oxygen atom has is bonded to a CH3 or methyl group, it would react with aqueous alkaline iodine. One, identify the type of reaction that occurs when butuanine reacts with steam. Again, that would be electrophilic addition reaction where double bond is broken down by addition of an electrophile. To state what can be deduced about the structure of S from its reaction with aqueous alkaline iodine, again, it means that S, which is an alcohol, has CH3 bonded to the CHOH. Alcohols can only react with aqueous alkaline, alkaline iodine if there is a methyl group bonded to the carbon that has the functional group on it. So this is only possible in secondary alcohols. Three, explain why S is the major product of the reaction, but uh, of reaction of butuanine with steam. So again, S, which is the secondary alcohol, is the major product, and T is the minor product because T was made using a primary carbocation, and S was made using a secondary carbocation. A secondary carbocation is more stable since it has two alkyl groups, which is greater than one alkyl group. And so two alkyl groups have a greater positive inducing effect on the carbon atom than the uh, than just a single alkyl group in primary carbocation. Or draw the skeletal formulae of S, T, and U, where S, T are the alcohols and U is the ketone. All right, since these are all four carbon atom chains, they'll have the same backbone, one, two, three, and four carbon atoms. S is a secondary alcohol, so an alcohol alcohol group on the second carbon atom. You could have also have drawn it on this one over here. And T is also a four carbon atom chain with um, the alcohol group on the first carbon atom. You could also draw it over here. U is also uh, U also has a four carbon backbone, and it's got a ketone group on the second carbon atom you could have drawn it over here as well five write an equation to represent the oxidation of s to u so from secondary alcohol to a ketone by acidified potassium dichromate you should use oxygen in bracket to represent the oxidizing agent so you just add a single uh, oxygen as oxidizing agent to s to form the product u and water molecule as a byproduct D CH3 CH2 thrice CO2H is a colorless liquid with an unpleasant odor. So you've got three, four, and five carbon atoms, meaning that this is pentanoic acid. It reacts with methanol, which is an alcohol, in the presence of an acid catalyst to produce an organic product V, which would be an ester. And V has a pleasant fruity smell name V. So you start in an ester, you start with the name of the alcohol and end with the name of the acid which would make it methyl pentanoid. A student analyzed pentanoic acid, methanol, and V, or methyl pentanoid, using infrared spectroscopy. The spectra were returned to the student without labels. Identify which of the infrared, infrared spectra, X, Y, or Z, corresponds to the ester, methyl propanoid and explain your answer with reference to relevant features of the three spectra in the region above 1500. So you're only going to pay heed to absorptions above 1500. Because this question asks you to refer to the three spectra, you need to uh, mention why uh, you include any of these spectra as the answer and exclude any of them as not being the answer. For the answer, you need to look out for the functional groups of V 
which would be the carbonyl carbon and the ester bond the ester bond has absorption value which is lower than 1500 so we're not gonna look at that whereas the carbonyl carbon uh, causes an uh, in an ester causes an absorption between 1700 to 1750 now that absorption of 1710 to 1750 is present in spectrum x and in x spectrum z However, in spectrum Z, you also have the wide absorption of around 3000, which indicates the presence of an acid group. And so does the infrared spectrum Y. Also, Y does not have the absorption at around 1700 and 1750, which would have indicated the presence of the carbonyl carbon, which is present in the ester V. And therefore, Y and Z are not the ester, whereas X is. So here's my answer for the last part. And we are done with this paper. Thank you for watching.